Hey piggy people. So today marks the end of an era. I officially have no skinny pigs. I have had skinny pigs for the last almost 12 years. I originally started with only skinny pigs and slowly but surely some furry pigs joined the club. Now I officially have none. So that of course means that dear Annie has left. So Annie was fighting congestive heart failure, which I already knew it was end of life care. Kind of thought we were going to have a bit more time, but we were really struggling with trying to find a balance with her medication. I had reduced the Lasix a lot and was giving her tons of extra fluid, doing lots of extra critical care and recovery food so that she would have electrolytes and tons of good nutrition and extra water content from that and we're doing okay it was quite up and down just each day but we were managing and her breathing was great but then uh, just yesterday she was refusing to have food or water I did get some stuff into her just to try to keep her more comfortable but I knew that that was it once she lost her fight to have food and water I think she was telling me that she's done. So I had made an appointment to take her in the next morning because I was keeping her comfortable. She didn't look like she was in any pain. She wasn't breathing weird. Uh, I had her warm and with her friends. And I mean, she'd take a little bit of veggies here or there, but she wasn't interested in stuff. But then unfortunately, later that evening, it looked like she had a stroke. So she was all tilted to the one side and her one eye was all shaky and weird. And so I went to the emergency vet and had her put to sleep. Very sad. It's been a lot this year. Like pigs are awesome and so much fun, but they're really expensive. And so many illnesses, the craziest things, like I swear that I've seen it all. And it really takes a toll on you. So like this year, I've lost three skinny pigs, my last three skinny pigs, who are all family members, all to just weird, crappy genetics of their bodies shutting down. And it stinks. So one of the ways that I like to, I guess, heal and cope and move on is I always like to change the cages a bit kind of set things up different so that it gives you something else to look at, I guess. So I decided since Busby and Autumn are now just a duo, that they really didn't need the huge cage that they had. So I have decreased them to a 3x8, which I still think is really great for two piggies. And then that means that the herd got an extra 2x3, which I think they could use because that's five pigs. So... Here's Busby and Autumn. They're still in the same section. I just took a, off this part here so they can see the herd perfectly. So now the herd has an extra large area. Well, I guess really two extra large areas, which I think they'll use greatly. And trying to look on the upside, I'm going to see if this will make it so I don't have to do full cage cleans twice a week. I'm hoping if I keep the herd's messy area in this end that perhaps that side won't need to be changed twice a week, maybe just once a week to kind of save a bit on laundry. So we'll see how it goes. So they've got uh, two big sections, like two 2x3s two where they have their hay on that I can change as needed. And they've got lots of wood logs and their little I don't know what you call them, the utility shelves. And same with these guys, their hay section is down there. And I am going to see if I can change their cage fully just once a week as well. Since now that it's just two pigs, and if they mainly poop and pee where they're eating, we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty picky about how tidy I like to keep things, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it a week without just wanting to clean everything. So we'll see. Um, Annie, when she was 
brought home from after being put to sleep, what I always do for the pigs is put them in with their cage mates so that they understand that they have passed away so that when I do remove the piggy permanently, they understand where they went. They come to terms with it on their, on their own terms, however they deal with it. All pigs are different for whether they want to see their dead friend or not. Some of them like to groom. Others seem scared and stay away. I don't know what Autumn and Buzz did because I it was really late at night so I left Danny in the cage and then took her out this morning and I don't know if they did anything with her or not. But in their own way, they all realize that she's no longer here. And I will be burying Angus, Annabelle, and Annalise all together. I hadn't buried the other two yet, so I will be doing that soon. And their little family will be reunited. So, trying to think of positive things. I do like um, the cage setups right now. I think it's nice and open for everybody. Lots of room. And it's also really weird for the first time in almost 12 years not panicking about the temperature of this room. So as I said, I've always had skinny pigs, so I've always had to have the portable heater going. I've had heat mats plugged in. And like if the power ever went out, I was always freaking out about how are the skinny pigs going to keep warm. Because you kind of needed to keep their room about 72 to 74 degrees. And sometimes that was quite challenging in the winter to keep this room as warm as I needed. But now I can kind of relax more because these guys will be perfectly comfortable with like 68 to 70 would be fine with me. I mean you could probably go lower to 65. I wouldn't go lower than that though. But I mean like 68 to 70 keeping it in here will be much easier. And will I get more skinny pigs in the future? I know people are going to wonder. You never know what the future will hold. At the moment though, I still feel like I have uh, one pig who's, you know, takes a lot of extra work and that's a uh, Reese Bear. So Reese, we still deal with her. She just left while I was trying to film her. We still deal with her abscess. So it's Lucky for her that it stays as an open pore, so I'm able to relieve any pus that builds up, which luckily isn't too much, and then I file her top teeth, and we're maintaining it that way. I don't know how it will go for Reese. It's kind of unknown to me at this time, like what the end game will be for her, like... I've never dealt with a uh, dental disease before. So I kind of feel like Reese is my palliative pig, even though like she's completely awesome right now and you would never know that anything was wrong just looking at her. So I'm thankful for that, but I still feel like I have my hands full because she is on permanent medication and I do have to look after her every morning and every night to make sure that her abscess is clean and tidy. So, for right now, um, Seven Pigs feels much more manageable. I've been used to being at 10 for so long, so I kind of want to enjoy having a bit less. Because it's been really expensive this past year, like crazy expensive with all the issues. And it's been kind of sad. So, I look forward to just like breathing a sigh of relief hopefully for quite a long time and just enjoying all the piggies that I have right now. And as I said, like who knows what the future holds. I mean like Busby, I didn't plan on getting him and he arrived. And really I didn't plan on um, Annie or Annalise either. I had randomly got messaged to take them. And since I already had Angus who was part of the family, I took them in. And I mean really Raisin I didn't plan on either. My vet sent me a picture of her and asked if I would take her in. So, who knows what will happen. 
but I'm not going to be actively looking for any more pigs, that's for sure. So thank you guys for all your support, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!